Hello and welcome to part five of 3D compositing a car in Blender. Today we're gonna to be setting up the materials of our car to make it look realistic in our scene. And just so you know, I'm not gonna go into super detail about creating materials in Blender. There's already tons of good tutorials out there about that, but we will go ahead and set up some basic materials for our car, which will be perfectly sufficient for what we're doing in this series. All right, so this is where we left off in our last uh, episode. So we've got our car here, and if we go to our camera view, it does track in the scene well. By the way, if you open up your Blender file and you get this purple thing, it's because uh, the image sequence has not been loaded in properly. So to fix that, you can just go ahead and hop over to the camera of your camera settings, go to background images, and then down here next to the 001.png, if you click the folder next to that, go ahead and navigate to where you put your image sequence, click the first image, hit open clip, and it will be back there ready for viewing. But we don't even need that today because we're just gonna be looking at creating the materials for our car, so we really don't even need our background image for this process. All right, now for creating our materials, we want to be able to see what our materials on this car looks like. So um, if you go up to this little circle on the top right, you can click the far right, which is viewport shading, basically rendered view, and you'll probably get something that looks like this. And this looks pretty messed up, but don't worry, we can fix all this. First off, we need to change our rendering engine to cycles. So go to the camera tab on the right and choose render engine cycles. That already looks a lot better, but to start working on our materials, we really need a better lighting setup so we can properly see what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to solid view. And what we're going to do is click this uh, default lamp up here. And under lamp settings, I'm gonna change this to an area lamp. And I'm gonna scale that way up just by hitting S and scale up till we get a big plane like this and move it out there like that. Then I'm gonna hit D, duplicate it. R for rotate and just kind of get sort of two giant planes of light here. I'm also going to add a plane here just as a sort of temporary ground plane we can use uh, to sort of be the ground underneath our car. All right, now if we go to rendered view again, we get something that looks like this and this will work quite well. We've got nice, big, soft lighting and this will work well for setting up our materials of our car. All right, so first off, when we start working on materials, you're gonna wanna switch over and go to the shading tab and this will give us a better layout for working on materials because we can work on our nodes down here and we see our viewport up here. And in our viewport, as you can see, it's been changed back to this other weird view, which is actually Eevee, which is a different rendering engine, which we're not gonna be using today. So go ahead and switch back to the rendered view up here in the top viewfinder so you can see what you want. I'm gonna go ahead also and hide my camera just because we don't need that right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just position my viewport to where I can see my car and start working on our materials. Now you'll notice there's already some materials attached to this um, this car when we imported it. And uh, there's a couple problems with it. So we're gonna go through and sort of redo some of these materials. First off, we're gonna look at the material of our main body. So if you go ahead and select the body down here, you can see all the nodes open up for this material. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty complicated looking material here. And you could totally just leave it like this and just leave it and not mess with it. or you know, look in here and start messing around with things and see how things work. Um, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this and create a new material so you can sort of see a bit of the process of creating a material. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this by selecting that and hit X. And then I'm gonna hit Shift A and hit Search and I'm gonna look for a principled BSDF shader. And that's like your main shader node you'll be using for most materials. Go ahead and drag the output of that to the surface input of your material output node. And then you will get something like this, which is just this big clay white material type thing. So first off, um, in this principled B BSDF, we wanna start from the top, work our way down. So I'm gonna start looking at the base colors. The first thing we need to look at, that's just pretty self-explanatory, it's just the color of your model. So I'm gonna do a red just like we did before, but this is where you know, you sort of have a lot of creative freedom. You could do something like blue. You could do really any color you want. You know, some colors just don't look right on cars because there aren't any cars like that. So try to choose something. If you're going for realism, try to choose something that could realistically happen in real life. Um, so I'm gonna choose just basically a nice hot rod red. Um, next down, you wanna change metallic to one. Metallic should always be between zero or one. It's sort of like an off and on thing. And because this is metal, we wanna make sure that's set to one. Uh, down here, the next slider we need to look at is roughness, and this is basically how uh, reflective um, the material is or how shiny it is. So if we turn this roughness down really, really low, it gets very reflective and you can see I have a lot of sharp reflections on it, whereas if you turn it all the way up, it gets very matte. 
For a car, usually something around 0.4 works pretty well to get that nice metallic shininess. Now, when working on materials, it's usually good to get a reference of what it looks like in real life. So I've actually pulled up a reference image of a car. And it's usually a really good idea to look at reference photos of something in real life, especially when you're trying to do realistic visual effects work, because that can really help you figure out what needs to look different to make it look more realistic. And what we can actually do, we can select this base color, choose our dropper, and choose the exact color from this image, and then just brighten it up a bit. And now we know we have that basically the exact same hue. Now you notice on here, this is kind of looking a little bit kind of like a brushed metal, but over here we've got super shiny highlights on this car paint. And that's because uh, on real cars, they have a base coat and then they put a clear coat on top of that to make it look really shiny. So Blender has something built in called clear coat, which will do the exact same thing. And again, it's a sort of a off or on thing. So you wanna make sure if you have it set to either zero or one, we want it on. So I'm gonna set it to all the way up to one. And then we'll add a clear coat on top of our car. So if we move this around and I'm gonna try to get an angle where we can see our answer. I think I'm gonna select this light and scale this down and scale this down so we can get a little harsher lighting here. And now as you can see, when we added that clear coat, we now have these extra bright highlights on top of our base coat, which is exactly what you want for a car paint. You also have clear coat roughness value, and that's the exact same thing we did earlier. Lower is shinier, but the default 0.03, I think, will work perfectly for what we're doing. All right, I think that's looking pretty good for our car paint material. But before we move on, let me go ahead and show you a little bit about material management. So if you go over on the right here, you can click this material tab, and this will basically give you a list of all the materials used by that object. So you'll notice we have multiple objects here, but when we selected one and changed the material of that one, this also changed as well. What's up with that? Well, actually they're both using the same material. You can see this is using something called Keros, Keros, I have no idea how to pronounce that. Anyway, they're both using that red material. So when you change that material, it's gonna ch also change any objects using that material. Hope that made sense. So we click this engine grill or this sort of outlined metal parts here. They're all using the same chrome uh, material. So we only have to change that one chrome material and it will update for all of our metal parts. So if we look at this chrome material, there's also some extra nodes here and you could totally leave it like this. I think this chrome material works really well, but just to sh sort of show you what's possible, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and add another principal BSDF shader node. Attach that to our surface of our material output. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that base color to like a middle gray. And I'm gonna change the metallic to one because it's chrome is metal. And I'm gonna change the rougher to something like point, uh, three, sorry, point 0.2. And I think that helps give it sort of a brushed chrome look versus a super shiny chrome. I kind of like that brushed metal look. And I'm not gonna have a clear coat because chrome doesn't have a clear coat. So I kind of like the way that looks, um, but if you want it to be super shiny, you could change that roughness to like 0.1 and that would give you a lot more sharper uh, reflection. But I'm gonna go 0.2 and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at our tires. As you can see, we have some problems here because they are purple and newsflash tires are not purple. So if we look at this material, the reason why that's happening is because the material is actually pulling in an image texture to use and uh, that texture is not attached anywhere. I don't I don't know if it was included with the download or not, but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna go ahead and just delete all that again, and we're gonna create our own new uh, material to work for this. So I'm gonna use principal BSDF again. This is like the super shader. You can use it for most everything. But you notice when we change that shader, uh, there's still part of the tire that's not being used. And that's because this tire has uh, multiple materials mapped to different parts of the tire. So as you can see on the right here, we have uh, two materials that are being used in this tire. If we wanna fix that, we can do two things. We could go ahead and create a material and then copy the nodes over to the second material or just delete the second one and then suddenly the entire shader is being used for the entire part. There are some objects where you really do want multiple materials, but in this case, I want the tire just to be all one material, so I'm just going to use the same shader. Also, if you want to rename a material, on the right under the on the material tab, just go ahead and double click the name and you can change it to tire or whatever you want it to be. Okay, for this base color, I'm gonna make to being almost black and I'm going to turn the roughness up to 0.8. And that already would totally work. Um, but one thing you kind of notice is all being a very, a very flat, there's no real, any real texture to it. And since it's kind of a rubber, you think it would be kind of, you know, like car tires have textures, they have grooves and stuff like that. So to sort of add to that texture, we're gonna actually import an image texture and use that for 
what's called a bump map. So I went to my favorite uh, site for downloading textures, which is CC0 Textures, and I found just a basic asphalt texture, and I went ahead and downloaded it. There's a link in the description where you can download that same texture from their site. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my file browser here on the left. I'm gonna navigate to where I saved that texture download. And this is called a PBR texture, which stands for Physically Based Rendering. And what that means is basically, you have your main color texture, but then there's also a couple other images which are all meant to work together. Now, you could use all of these images to create a, an entire material just from these images, but because I don't want to use an actual asphalt, all I want is sort of all the grooves and scratches that come from having asphalt. I just want that texture by itself. So I'm gonna use the NRM JPEG version, which stands for normal, and go ahead and drag that into my node. That will create a new node which links to that image. Now I wanna take the information from this image and put it into my node to apply to this tire. So first off, I'm gonna change the color space down here from sRGB to non-color. Now if we open this image on our image editor, you can see what this, what this image looks like. And it's sort of a bunch of little grooves and it's a really weird blue and red color. And this is called a normal map. And what this will do is it will take the different color values of the image and Blender can take that and apply it to the actual roughness of the object. So that when light hits it, it looks like the object has grooves and stuff like that. It's kind of weird to explain, but uh, let me just go ahead and show you how to do it. So what you're gonna need is a normal map node, which will basically take an input of a texture, which you can take your color of your texture and put it into the color of the normal map, and then take the normal output and put that into the normal input of your BSDF shader. Now it's kind of hard to tell what that actually did, but let me go ahead and turn the strength all the way up to 10 and zoom in so you can see it. I'm also gonna brighten this up just for the sake of the demonstration. So you can see what this has done is it's taken all the grooves from this image and applied it to our tire, and that will help give our tire some texture on that rubber, which will help it look a little more real. But 10 is way too strong, so I'm gonna turn that back down to one, and also turn my uh, color back down to a uh, very close to black. All right, that is looking pretty good for the tire. Now you notice the other tires have uh, taken on some of the texture, but uh, it's only on the sides and not the bottoms and all the way around. And the reason is because those tires are also still using multiple textures. So to fix that, you can just click on them and then select that extra texture we're not using and just hit the minus button to delete it and do that for each tire. All right, now in this model, um, if we look at inside the car, there's also some missing textures uh, inside this, mainly on the steering wheel. So if we go ahead and select the steering wheel, if we look at the steering wheel, there's several different materials being used here. The chrome for the bars going out to the handles, and then there's a separate one for the center as well as the handles around the wheel. Both of these are using imaged images for textures, which I've been missing, which is why they are purple. So to fix this, we'll go ahead and just quickly recreate each of these things. So what we can do is go ahead and just delete the existing nodes, add principled BSDF, plug that in, and for this, I'm just gonna do a very basic sort of wooden material. So I'm gonna do sort of a dark orange or brownish, sort of a reddish brown. And what I'll do is go ahead and zoom in here so we can see what I'm doing. Now, this honestly doesn't really matter that much because I'm in my shot. You're not really gonna see it, but you just wanna make sure that at least all your textures are accounted for. So in case you wanna do a different angle later on, uh, you still have all your textures set up. So for this, I'm gonna do kind of a, maybe a little lighter, something like that would work. And what I'm gonna do is turn the roughness, um, I'll turn the roughness to about 0.6, but I'll also go ahead and add a clear coat. That's because if you actually look at most steering wheels, they sort of have a uh, sort of plastic coating on them, and that clear coat will help emulate that. I think I'll maybe turn that roughness down actually to point, yeah, actually I think I like that roughness more at 0.3. And then that base color, I think I might change to a bit more of a, a beige maybe a bit brighter. You can really do whatever you want here. You just wanna make sure you have some material there so it's not purple. All right, now I'm gonna select the other one, which is the leather. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these as well. For this, I might make this uh, also beige, but make it much darker, and I'll go ahead and turn the roughness up, and I won't add a clear coat to that. Okay, now the last thing we need to do is uh, these gauges, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this material too. Go ahead and delete these nodes, add in my own. And for this, I'll go ahead and just make it kind of a uh, a white and I'll probably just leave it as the default texture because you honestly can't even see these in the video but if you wanted to you could go ahead and change that to whatever you wanted all right that is about all the materials we need to mess with for this car so it's basically done now you could go into a lot more detail and working on tweaking each one of these um, 
materials. Hopefully that gave you a quick overview on just setting up materials for a model. There's tons of other great tutorials on if you really wanna dive into working with materials. I left a link in the description as well to a tutorial on using that principled BSDF node uh, by Blender Guru. He has a great tutorial just going through what each one does in detail. In the next episode, we're going to be setting up our lighting to get our car to blend to our scene. I'm Josiah, thanks for watching.